since the 1960s or so, maybe even a little earlier, uh, narrative history of the kind that a lot of journalists still practice today, but that academic historians used to write more of, uh, has not entirely, but largely fallen from favor. Now, starting with Lawrence Stone around 1980 and sort of every few years, there's another call for the revival of narrative history. So it remains something that people still believe in and believe has value, but the overwhelming pressures in academia, whether you're a graduate student writing a dissertation or even at various uh, successive stages of one's career, are to write studies that address an analytical problem that emerges from the existing literature. And, uh, and Gordon Wood wrote a very nice article in the Washington Post a couple of years ago, sort of trying to tease this out. A lot of historians don't write narrative history, therefore, not because they think it's bad or they can't do it, but as a matter of choice, because that is not generally the, how professional academic historians see the project of, of what they're engaged in. Now, I think one shortcoming of this is that it, the presidency has traditionally been a great subject for narrative history, for biography, for the kinds of books that, as I said, journalists now tend to do. So academics, it's not that they can't write those, but they have sort of seeded the field. They've sort of chosen to write other kinds of projects. And even when we do write about the presidency uh, or write about particular presidents, it tends to focus on a particular policy question. It, it tends not to be the kind of grand narratives that we associate with a William Luchtenberg, or Arthur Schlesinger, uh, James McGregor Burns, people who were not just popular historians, but were also very well-credentialed, well-regarded scholars. Um, and so we've had a bit of a bifurcation where one can do, I think, very good, popular uh, presidential narratives uh, but those tend not to be the same books that are capturing the imagination of academics. And it would be nice for me, I think, if there could be a reintegration where academics were really engaged with the literature that is about the presidency and that the public were reading more work by, by academic scholars. I think the next step, or, or another conference like this, might um, really make it a point to include non-academic uh, historians, you know, so-called independent scholars, um, you know, people like Ron Chernow or Rick Perlstein or, you know, whoever it might be, who are outside the academy but would both bring, get a lot from and bring a lot to this conversation. This conversation was more between historians and political scientists, which is also an important conversation to have because, you know, our two fields also tend to operate in relative uh, separation from each other. And particularly for a student of the presidency, obviously, you know, that's, that's silly. I mean, we have a lot to learn from each other. And I think most people felt very good about this conference because, you know, for no other reason, we just learned a lot from each other this week. It does suggest possibilities for more of this. Now, I, I think there's still a lot of skepticism in academia about people who do the presidency. There's still a tendency to regard it as kind of not where the action is, um, you know, and, and that you know, a graduate student is still not going to be encouraged to write a dissertation focused on a president. I mean, that's still the dominant norm. Um, so maybe if this can go a little ways toward changing that, that's to the good.